Morning everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. Jack here and we are going to head out into the garden this morning and we're going to do a little picking. However, first we're going to grab our pig bucket. Look at you guys looking good. What was that? That was probably some treat that mom gave you yesterday. There's a bunch of Cheerios in there. We had a box of Cheerios that Emma was eating and then stopped eating, so they got stale. And then underneath there are some banana peppers and what else is in there? Oh, green beans from canning last night, which we'll talk about in a minute. We had just some overripe ones that we didn't get to, so they, uh, they went in the pig bucket. Where's the rest of the lazy bones? You guys in the hut? What's up? Hey Frank. What's up Squirt? This last little guy right here, he's another one of the named ones. So we have Frank with the blue eyes. And then we have Squirt. Squirt was the smallest of the pigs when we got him. And he kind of, he grew, but he just didn't grow at the same rate as the other pigs. He kind of maintained a little bit of his small stature. So because of that, we nicknamed him Squirt and the name just kind of stuck. Hey, we're back. You guys didn't really go anywhere, but what just happened was I was out here, I put the camera down, we came back from feeding the pigs their snacks. And I looked over there, where is it? Right there. And I saw our old Lumna Acres chicken tractor. Now, as some of you know, I've been working on a Suskovich tractor, which is right, just the brightness here, which is right here behind me. You can see it's not finished yet. I was just on Big Bear Homestead's live stream the other night, and they were talking about some issues they ran into as well. Um, we'll talk about those in an upcoming video because they're kind of significant. It's not a huge deal. I mean, if, if you've done woodworking before, you've built stuff, you can kind of work your way around it, but there is a little bit tricky and there's some spots that I, I feel like maybe I should clarify or somebody should clarify. And since I'm doing it and I have a YouTube channel, maybe it's me. But anyway, I saw our alumna chicken tractor back there and we still had the meat birds in the garage. There's 55 of them. I figured it was time to get them out of the brooder. They were getting too big and I was hoping to have this done a little bit ago. But like I said, I ran into those issues. So Jackie and I, we kind of impromptu took the alumna acres chicken tractor, put it in the pasture that we have set up for the meat birds this year. And then just kind of not literally dumped them, but just kind of moved them down there hastily. And they're in there for now. They'll hang out in that chicken tractor for a couple days with their food and water. And then we'll prop the chicken tractor up and let them out on pasture so they kind of know that's their spot to return to each night. And then they can go out into the grass during the day. Let's get into the garden now though and do some picking. Things in the garden are really trucking along at this point. Jackie and I were just talking last night. This is the first year we've ever really had a good pepper harvest. The peppers I'm picking right now are something that's called a lamuyo. They're a little, I thought I was just buying regular red bell peppers at first, but they're these little peppers that are supposed to be sweet, but something happened, and I don't know if it's because it's planted right next to a jalapeno and right next to a habanero plant, but they're hot. Like when you eat them, they're, they're not super hot like a habanero, but, but they're hot like a banana pepper or a cherry pepper would be. So really cool variety. Um, I pick them before they turn fully ripe, uh, but they turn into a bright red color when they're ripe. They look just like a red bell, uh, but just smaller, which is really kind of cool. And then the other thing that's been cranking this year are our habaneros. These plants, this was a plant that I just picked up kind of randomly. Uh, I saw it at a discount store and it, it looked kind of good. So I was like, sure, I'll grab one. And it's been probably the best performing pepper we've ever had. Check these suckers out. I'm still not sure quite what I'm gonna do with all of these peppers. These are just two orange ones that came up as ripe right now, but there's so many on the plant and I'm probably gonna end up dehydrating them and um, just making pepper dust out of them. Tomatoes are still coming along. We're dealing with blight, which 
sucks as always we could definitely go longer in the season it's still plenty hot out it's just part of where we live and part of you know the rain that we get and that's uh that's what happens some of the tomatoes that we've been growing it's a black crim i'll pick it and let it ripen inside but these things have been really nice they're delicious i know that i've mentioned in previous videos that i'm not a fan of tomatoes and this black crim tomato has really changed my mind I've been able to eat these things with just a little bit of salt uh, alongside like fresh mozzarella cheese or something like that. And they're so good. I, I Dare I say I'm beginning to like tomatoes, but I feel like the black crim may have changed my mind on that, which is pretty cool because I like growing tomatoes. I've just never liked eating them. The green beans that you see down behind me, they've been blowing our doors off this year. We've been eating tons of them. Jackie brought a bunch up to Vermont with her last week. I actually canned a bunch last night that were just kind of leftovers from what we haven't been eating. We've been super into canning this year. We haven't traditionally done it in the past. We've just frozen our stuff, but we kind of decided this year, let's get into canning. That way we have a little bit more room in the freezers because we're gonna have a lot of pork coming this November. I did actually film a little bit of canning last night. So let's cut to that montage right now. a bad looking basket now as a lot of you homesteaders are probably aware there's been a shortage of canning jars throughout this whole thing and we did a pretty heavy job of buying what we could when it was available earlier this summer 
up. <laughs> Cozy. You're a little too young for that. And a lot of what we found was pint jars and half pint, like jelly jars. But we have a secret weapon. So New Hampshire, in, at least in a lot of the smaller towns like where we live, we have town dumps. Uh, they call them transfer stations, quote unquote. And it's for sorting recyclables and trash. But in a lot of these town dumps, they have what are called swap shops where people can put stuff that's still good and can be used by other people. And a couple years ago, it was at least four or five, it was maybe right after we bought this place, I happened to go to the dump and I found a ton of canning jars. This is a care self-sealing. This is a ball mason jar right here. And somebody had just taken all of these and put them in the swap shop. We have an Atlas mason jar here. This is the kind that you see tomato sauce sometimes come in in the stores. And there weren't any bands or lids with them, but they just put all these jars there and left them for the taking. At the time, we didn't even really can, but I knew at some point whether it was just putting flowers in like a pretty vase or using them for like a friend's wedding or something like that for decor, we'd find a use for them. And now that there's a canning shortage, these things are great to have. So we can actually pull these out. I'm gonna bring these downstairs, clean up a bunch of them. Some of them I'm sure are probably chipped and won't be any good. But I'm gonna take a look at them and see what's what and what we can use and hopefully use them to can the rest of the season. The big thing here is that these jars don't go bad. So even this old ball mason jar, ball perfect mason, I have no idea how old this is, made in USA. This thing is still good. The lids haven't changed. So if you can find lids, which at least in our area, the wide mouths are the only ones that are hard to find. The regular mouths like this, they're still pretty easy. If you can find lids, you can clean these things out and you can still use them, which is huge, especially in the homesteading world because you wanna reuse everything you possibly can. So I guess that would be my homesteading tip of the day, the week, this is coming out on a Tuesday. So if you can find jars or if you have old jars in a parent's basement or a friend of the family, use them because they're still good. There's nothing wrong with these things. Just check for damages, make sure they're not chipped, make sure there's no cracks, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you haven't already checked out our last video with the giveaway for the Smartro SC92 weather station, click up here, uh, watch that video, let us know what you think about it in the comments down below, and you can still be entered. You have until midnight tonight, if you're watching it on Tuesday, to just leave a comment on that video, and one of the people who comments is going to win it. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Bye.